fashion insider friends. What is up? This is the Fashion Crimes Podcast, where I cover all things fashion, style, shopping, style inspiration, and interview incredible small business owners who are changing the fashion industry for the better. Yes, I'm the best friend you never knew you needed and the poster child for fashion over 40. And I mean, way after 40. Say it with me, fashion and style are your friends, not your enemies. I'm Holly Cates, your favorite personal stylist, and let's keep it real, the only Holly you need to know. Turn it up, because I got a lot to say, and I am super stoked you're here. What's up, everybody? It's your hostess with the mostest coming at you with the flavor of the week, what to wear to the Kentucky Derby. Look, anyone who knows me knows that I'm a terrible liar, so I'm not going to say that I've been, but... But, but I can honestly say that I have been to a derby party, duh, and my bestie Jenny and I, we did look quite fabulous for that. So we're going to discuss some options if you're going to a party to support or if you're indeed going to the tracks. If in fact you are going to the derby, good on you. And I hope you send in your outfit pics so I can see and then I can brag about you on the next podcast. If you're going to a party, please, please send in your pics. I have to know what you're wearing. I have to. Anywho, are you new here? If so, damn glad to have you. And if you are one of my OGs, welcome back, my Fashion Insider Besties. If you're new, please make sure you sign up for our email list so you can get all of this free fashion content delivered straight to your inbox every single week. Or DM me directly through the Fashion Crimes Podcast Instagram or my personal Instagram, Holly Kate Styling, and introduce yourself so we can be besties. Don't know how your day can get any better. I have been getting emails really from Kathy and Beth. Thank you so much for writing in. I've been getting DMs on the regular too, which is very exciting. I've been getting reviews, y'all. Thank you so really. So, so much for the reviews. I would like to do a special shout out to Maddie from IG. She is a new insider bestie who made a video review. I'm sorry. I almost fell out of my chair. She is completely gorge, super fashionable. She is the sweetest person ever to take the time to let all of her followers know to listen to the podcast and how much she has been enjoying it. It looks like she's very interested in fashion from her profile, and she is constantly taking outfit pics. Loving this journey for her. So y'all give her a like and a follow because we love people who support women entrepreneurs and female-owned fashion brands that are changing the industry for the better. Yes, that's Maddie Govdick or Govdike. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. That's Maddie, M-A-D-D-I-E, G-O-V-E-D-I-C-H on Instagram. We're giving you a huge, huge fashionable high five to Maddie this week. And I just want to say, look, if you give me a review, you will be recognized, okay? If you give me a video review, um, who knows what I'll do, okay? It will be worth your while. Let's just say that. Thank you, Maddie. Love you so, so much for that. And of course, I reposted it on my Instagram, Holly Kate Styling Instagram. So go watch it, please. Thank you. So the Kentucky Derby is among us and what an excuse to get dressed up. The Derby started back in 1875 with the intention of the grand event to be luxurious and a place to be seen. It was definitely envisioned for the quote-unquote upper class and modeled after British horse racing, which meant extravagant dress was expected. In the early 1900s, women of society wore large, elegant hats with matching gloves and shoes and dresses with corsets and very tight bustiers. The large flamboyant hat was heard to cause good luck. Men, of course, wore suits with ties, hats, And some wore gloves as well and canes and things like that. So as fashion changed throughout the decades, the clothing is still very spring-like, colorful, embellished, and over the top. 
But the hat, the hat has been the number one staple of the Derby since it started. And that's how we're going to break it up today. The hat and then everything else. Let's figure out how the blank canvas or the base of your outfit is going to play out. Okay. So the Derby is all about dresses, 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 dresses. Now, in my research, I have read that some suiting has made its way in, but honestly, I think that most people would opt for a dress. Where to start, where to start. I have made a very special Pinterest board for you this week with outfit ideas, so make sure that you check that out. Some places to look to start would be Lila Rose, Monique Lulier, and La Double J, or in layman's terms, it's La Double J, but I think it's pronounced La Double J. Found some super cute dresses at Millie and Amelia Wickstead and Mary Catherine Zhao. I think you can wear long or short, to be honest. I mean, you can wear whatever you like, but if you're actually going to go to the race, it's going to be really hot, just saying, and it's going to be completely disgustingly mobbed. So if I was going, I would totally get a flouncy, floofy tulle dress or skirt with some serious platforms or mules, cute top, and a hat for days. If you're going to be standing up, platforms give the illusion of a higher heel, but they aren't, okay? Smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors. That's what fashion is, smoke and mirrors. They can be quite comfortable. Don't forget the oversized sunglasses and the fabulous jewelry. Now, Because you're going to be outside, I wouldn't wear any jewelry that was super delicate to you or meaningful because costume is better if you're going to be walking around in a sea of drunk people. If you have nice seats and you've got like a suite or box seat, then you're probably okay. But just remember, it's all about color, pattern, print, and having a ticket to look like you're wearing a crazy wallpaper pattern. So speaking of crazy wallpaper... It's been the quote in thing for guys are those crazy printed suits. I mean, seersucker all day long, mattress print, plaid, yes. But there's an awesome, awesome company. I know it's called Oppo Suits and they have hilarious printed suits in every single print you could ever imagine. They do plain colors too, but I just put a few of my faves on the Pinterest board. And if your man isn't scared, to go for it. I mean, I love it. And I think it's awesome when I see someone wearing one. What I really love is to see a couple that matches, like a guy's suit matching a woman's dress. I mean, totally love that. Anyway, as the hat is the biggest deal here, you can go as crazy as you want. I've seen giant hats, regular hats. I've seen what's called a fascinator. All that really is, is a hat that's on top of a headband. Very, very British. Anyway, I personally love Eugenia Kim and all of her hats. I've also discovered a hat company that's new to me that I am dying and completely obsessed over. Merv Bayendir. I think that's how you say it. Bayendir. Put some of my favorites on the board. Of course, dying to get one of their hats. Dying. Dying to have somewhere to wear a hat like that. I'll just have to think of an event or, you know, I might or might not wear one around the house. I can't confirm or deny that, but I want one of those hats. Tons of the examples are on my Pinterest board. Any of these ideas are perfect if you are going to a derby party as well, even if you're going nowhere near Kentucky. Okay, so there's that. Please send us some pics if you're going to go or if you're going to someone's backyard. I need to know if these suggestions were helpful. If you have a fabulous dress or a hat, let me see it. I've got to know. I'm very nosy. I have to know what you're wearing, okay? Cute bag, dress, shoes, jewelry, oversized sunglasses, and a fabulous hat. Now, if you're going to be sweating to death, if you're going to be like in the bitch section, I do recommend wearing something cool, no sleeves, and then a hat is going to really make you hot. So, you know, just make sure you've got like a portable fan. Drink water in between your cocktails. You might want to bring some tissues if they run out of toilet paper in the bathroom or whatever. You just never know, okay? You just never, never know. So let me know what you're wearing. I want to see it. I got to know. We had quite a few insider besties right in this week. 
And I know the subject of this podcast is about what to wear to the Derby, but I had to talk about these write-ins because they are very important and y'all got to hear what these people said. Okay. So first out, shout out to Melissa. She wrote in about last week's episode, top travel outfit ideas. She was asking how to style a Burberry trench coat. So first off, kudos to you for having a Burberry trench, duh. And for those of you who don't own a trench or who are in the market for buying one, this is like the Cadillac version of a trench. They don't get much better than Burberry as they've been making them for over 150 years. They have perfected this, but there are plenty of other companies who make a great trench as well. Anywho, there's really no messing this up as you can style it with just about anything. Pants, dresses, skirts, boots, pumps, etc. It classes up a casual outfit and elevates your style regardless of what you have underneath. The only way I would not wear a trench coat is for a cocktail or a black tie event. You must have a dress coat for this. non negosh A trench is an investment piece just like any other coat that you would buy. So you'll be wearing it for several years to come. If you have more questions about coats, please go back and listen to episode 73, How to Buy a Winter Coat. And P.S., this is the best time to buy a winter coat during the hot months. You never know what you're going to find, and it really helps if you can, to shop off-season. Then, Melissa asked, are the Adidas OG Samba tennis shoes approved for a 60-year-old? First of all, good for you for asking that. Disclaimer, there is no sneaker I would ever recommend that isn't appropriate for anyone of any age. Sneakers are timeless and ageless. You actually look younger by wearing very hip tennis shoes, I promise you. And you know what? 60 is the new 50. So there's that. I mean, the fact that you knew the style name and the model of your sneakers is actually quite impressive if you ask me. I would have never suggested it if it wasn't something you could actually wear, my dear fashion besties. So yes, every sneaker I suggest to you is highly approved. I don't care what your age is. Don't know how your day can get any better for a second time. Next, we have Sirwi. She's written in before, and we love her because she keeps writing in. Do love her. Shout out. What's up, Sari? We were going back and forth on what bag she could get, and she finally wrote back to me, and she was like, look, I have an injury, and I can't carry this bag that I got for a very long period of time. I think I need a backpack. I mean, what? Like, that's hard? So I went to my trustee, bestie Gretchen Mall of Gigi Mall Italian Made Handbags, Gretchen is going to take great care of her and everybody wins. Can't wait to see which one she picks. Of course, I interviewed Gretchen. Go back and listen to that episode if you want to know more about her Italian-made handbags, women-owned fashion brand, making a difference, totally loving her. Kira and I have been going back and forth as well. She was looking for a short wedding dress, but more importantly... The truth started coming out about her husband needed some serious fashion help. So basically, I told her that once he starts dressing better, he's going to feel better, but you have to plant that seed. Look, for all of you out there who thinks that your husband or your partner could use some work, some fashion help, I just want to say you're not alone, okay? I did it with my husband, and you can do it with yours too. The first step is awareness. I clean out my husband's closet three times. Once when we were dating, once we were engaged, once we were married. Three very different experiences. When it comes to the shopping part, we took literal baby steps, okay? The first thing we did with my husband was we changed his frames of his glasses. He cannot wear contacts. He wears glasses every day. So I was like, look, we've got to update your frames. You are wearing them every day. You cannot wear the same frames for three years, four years, five years. When we go and talk about glasses, now the frames are so inexpensive. You can go to Warby Parker or somewhere like that where you can get them sent to your house. You can try them on. I mean, you don't have to be Elton John, but you need to be like switching up your look, switching up your frames. That goes for men and women, okay? Glasses are like jewelry. You've got to switch it up. You cannot wear the same frames consistently. Fashion 
crime. That shit is tired. Okay. Just saying. So Kathy, shout out to Kathy. And we've been going back and forth, loving her as she's in real estate at the beach. And I love how she keeps telling me how unprofessional and terrible everyone looks that is selling houses around her. And she's like, OMG, I look great. These people look awful. Loving this so much. It really helps to have someone out there who gets it and understand that what you wear really does make a difference. And you know what? That's why she's selling more houses than anyone else. I'm just saying, okay? Now, Beth wrote in this week, and I absolutely love what she was asking about. She was like, "Um, love you, love the podcast, but on your Pinterest board, why are the models so young? That's annoying. Don't people in midlife model clothing because it's not cute looking at all these young people because I don't know if these clothes are really for me. Excellent, excellent, excellent observation, okay? I'm so glad you asked. So we're going to talk about that. This is what I said. Look, this goes for not only her, but everybody out there that's listening that struggles with, is this okay for me? I'm not sure. This is weird. This is too expensive. It's just younger people that are wearing these clothes. I don't understand. Look, the fashion industry has come leaps and bounds, leaps and bounds, literally worlds ahead and trying to be all inclusive, but in sizing. Companies are getting pressure to include more sizing and to fall in line with their competitors to increase the size range and appeal to a wider audience. However, I myself specifically don't see age inclusivity outside of the beauty and makeup industry. Companies like L'Oreal and Olay and other major corporations, they have actually done a great job with age inclusivity, especially in magazine ads and on television. The clothing industry, very different. So here's the cold truth. Models, they're meant to sell clothes. That's what models are made for, okay? This is their sole purpose. There are no or very few older women wearing the clothes for people that are younger than them. Older men, of course, all the time, all day long. You look in any catalog, any man's website, they show young guys, old guys, whatever. But it's still really just a hot older guy with gray hair. That's really what it is. But even clothes that are for older demographics, there's still young people modeling them. So for example, you look at old lady dresses and on department store, it's still very young women wearing dresses for older women. You might find the occasional older person in, in a denim ad or a television ad, but honestly, I just don't see this very much on websites when shopping for actual product. Clothes that are marketed to women, I would say like over 65, You'll see in the websites, younger women totally wearing the clothes. Why? So the clothes are more attractive. When attractive people wear them, they're more appealing. It's just human nature. Giving you the hope, that shining glimmer of hope, you know what? Maybe that you can wear this too. Look, I've said this a hundred times. I am 49 years old, okay? I'm doing my best to fight middle age dress for my body type in addition to evolve my style. I know the models are young, but it doesn't phase me when I'm looking online for styles and items for you to purchase because they are placeholders. Models are hangers for the clothes. They sell the clothes. They need to obviously be attractive people so they can sell. What's attractive? That's really up to the clothing brand and who they are marketing to. Department store websites, they have broader age ranges, but usually don't have older women. Just know this, don't let something like young models stand in the way of what you like. Use it as a guide. Make sure you're not shopping in the junior section. That is a whole nother podcast. We're going to talk about the difference between Missy and juniors, but just know they show clothing that is meant to enhance and sell the look not make you feel inferior. And that's exactly what happened when the plus size industry came about 20 years ago and started demanding size inclusivity in the marketplace. And so a lot of companies are selling up to size 14, 16, 18, what have you, 
even though that's really not who their customer is, they're opening the doors for newer customers. As far as younger models, <laughs> the plus size models, still young. Anyone under the age of 30, I just call them 12 years old. So all the models are 12. All the newscasters are 12 years old. Everyone's young. Everyone's younger than me. That's just what it is. So I've come to terms with it. Yes, it's annoying. But as someone who's going to be 50 this year, I'm just telling you, I'm going to roll with it. I am going to try to look and feel fabulous. Nothing's going to change. The minute that I turn 50, nothing is going to change. I mean, I am going to meditate a lot about it. Let's just be honest. And I'm going to have everyone call me and tell me how great I look. But other than that, I'm going to roll with it. Okay. So I hear you. I see you. I validate you. I'm not disagreeing. It is annoying. But we're just looking at the clothes. We're not really looking at the people. So there you go. Anyway, I am very, very happy that you guys keep writing in. I'm glad for the people that keep in touch with me, loving that journey for me. Okay, keep writing me. Keep telling me what you want to know, what you want to hear, what's going on, what you're going to wear to the Kentucky Derby. The Derby is on May 6th. I will be at an event. I was invited by one of my besties. Atlanta has a Dancing with the Stars. Okay, that's pretty fancy. I'm going to be dressed up for that. I've got some other really fancy things going on. Alexander McQueen is having another dinner. We're going to go to that gala. So I'm very grateful. I'm going to be posting all of my outfits. I have all my dresses in a row. Still don't know really what shoes or what bags I'm going to use. However, we are going on vacation and I do have a new bathing suit. It is a very different style for me. I will be posting pictures of that. So give me your comments. Tell me what you like about my bathing suit, what you don't like. Like I said, it's a different style for me. So I'm a rocket. Okay. Other than that, sign up for our email list. Please let me know what you would like to hear. I am so truly grateful again to Maddie for the video review. And for anybody else who writes me a, re a review, I'm super stoked and excited. Thank you so very much. My name is Holly Case, your favorite personal stylist, the only Holly you need to know, the hostess with the mostest and the best friend you never knew you needed in fashion. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. We got a lot of shit going on. We got some interviews coming up. We've got more outfit ideas coming up. Mother's Day's coming up. That's incredible. I'm going to do a whole nother bathing suit episode. And I've got a very special surprise coming out. We've got a whole style guide that we've been working on. Thank you to my marketing queen for not divorcing me. But y'all keep up the good work. Keep writing in. And you never know. You just might get a shout out on the podcast. You might get another video shout out from me. I can't confirm or deny. Y'all have a great fashionable week. Talk to you later. This is Holly Kate signing off for the Fashion Crimes Podcast. Bye.